1993, which is a national criminal instant background check. The federal government regulated any individual that's going to purchase an assault weapon or a handgun, the manufacturer or the uh, distributor would have to run them through the federal database to see if they're a wanted criminal or whether they had psychiatric issues or things like that. That would prevent them from buying that weapon. Again, that's only for handguns and assault weapons. The Gun Control Act of 1968. This controls interstate commerce. That means any trading of weapons, manufacturing of weapons inside the United States across state lines and also across its international borders. Also, the 2005 Child Safety Lock Act requires any license, importer, manufacturer, or dealer to provide a gun storage or safety device to the person who for the purchase of a handgun and the point to protect children. All of those acts were passed by Congress. With the way uh, our government works, the way the gun regulations we have now on a federal scale, it allows the states, which gets into my first contention, allows the states to dictate and enforce different laws to their different cultures. Obviously, the gun regulations here in California that everyone's used to are very strict. They're not very lenient. And the reason for that is people in California don't grow up with the appreciation of firearms that, say, somebody who grew up in Georgia will. It's not the same thing. People look at it differently. Just like you go to a different part of the world, everyone looks at everything differently. So with the way our federal regu regulations are written, it allows the states to dictate their area, which is what makes everything safer. Also, when they're talking about, uh, I will agree that they say assault weapons are used in a little bit of mass shootings, but they're not banned. So why are they saying that they're banned? Again, that ended in 2004. They also spoke about that shotguns and handguns are not a viable alternative for self-defense. Strongly disagree with that when he brings up attachments. For example, there's a shotgun, the AA-12. It's a semi-automatic shotgun. It has tactical applications for it. It has flashlights. It has everything else. Plus, it has a 100-round 12-gauge shotgun drum, which is going to do a whole lot more than a 30-round magazine in a 5.56. The 223 caliber that he spoke about is one of the smaller caliber rounds. The 762 he spoke about is a 308. A 308 is a large caliber round, and that's about the standard size for any deer rifle, and larger than most deer rifles. So again, their evidence doesn't make sense, and that's not what it, it, it's not there. It shouldn't be included. Um, so they talk about. Lost my train of thought. I'm too tired. <laughs> uh, so again, uh, it's the AF has no plan. Uh, they, they did speak about uh, making assault rifles more available and coming out with different regulations that other people will be able to buy them. The status quo already does that. It's already in effect, so they have no plan. They had no harms, which means there is no solvency. So, I'm Ben, I'm here and still uphold the status quo is, is what it is and it's, there's nothing that's gonna replace it right now. All right, cross legs, two minutes. Uh -huh.